good travel, but uh, it's a pleasure to see you all here today. So thank you for the introduction, Dave. Uh, as Dave mentioned, uh, my consulting firm uh, has been under contract with the Monroe County Commissioners as their economic development consultant for about two and a half years now. Um, and that work has been uh, challenging at times, but also deeply gratifying as well. A uh, brief overview about what we'll cover today in, in the presentation. Give you a brief uh, background and overview about myself and my firm. Uh, talk a little bit about Monroe County, sort of an introduction as to where it is and, and why it's uh, uh, come to prominence of late. Uh, talk about the project timeline for the Appalachian Resins uh, Cracker Project. And then, you know, how do we move forward? You know, providing a sort of a collaborative and client-focused environment to help uh, companies with their location decisions. And then just an overall economic de development perspective. So again, uh, my name is Jason Hammond. Uh, I founded uh, Hammond Consulting Group uh, almost a little over two and a half years ago now. Uh, been in this business for about 10 years altogether. Most recently with uh, Silverload Consulting in Cleveland, spent five years there. Uh, most of you in the room, if you're from Northeast Ohio, probably recognize the name Team NEO. It's a regional economic development group that covers all of Northeast Ohio, uh, including Stark County. And prior to that, I spent a little bit of time with uh, my home county in, in Lorraine, uh, working for their economic development department. You know, economic development is one of those things where even today, a lot of people don't really understand what it is or what you do. Um, I was one of those people even uh, partway through graduate school. Uh, came out of the uh, Levin College at uh, <coughs> Cleveland State, and uh, they had a concentration in the master's degree of public administration program that focused on economic development. And for me, that was really interesting because economic development combines a lot of different uh, disciplines. You know, there's law, there's real estate, there's politics, there's economics. Um, I've learned more about uh, natural gas than I ever thought I would want to know, but uh, you know, a couple years ago, if you asked me what NGL was, I would have had no idea, but now I can talk about, you know, commodity prices and how that affects things at the local level. So it's been a, it's been a good experience. And really the work that I do is, is broken up into two buckets, essentially. Doing corporate site selection and tax incentive negotiation for uh, companies seeking new locations to expand or, or relocate facilities, and a lot of ancillary services along with that. From the public sector side, um, again, a, a mixed bag of things, doing economic development strategic planning for cities, counties, port authorities, what have you, uh, helping them better understand what their target industry sectors are. Um, a lot of communities would like to be this, you know, they'd like to attract, you know, high tech or biomedical, um, but you have to really be realistic about what their assets are and, and how they match up with the sector opportunities uh, that are available. Um, a lot of what I do for Monroe County is centered around business attraction, and the Appalachian Resins uh, project is a good case story in that. Um, and then just all the other things that economic developers do, grant writing, project management, and some other things as well. So if we went in our time machine and traveled back, let's say 10 years ago, how many, in, how many people in this room by a show of hands would be able to point out on a map of Ohio where Monroe County is? Now, see, and there's people in the industry from, you know, if you're, if, you know, from the Stark County, you know, broad area. Monroe County is not that far away. But again, it's a, a small, very rural county. Um, I, I grew up in Vermilion uh, along the shores of uh, Lake Erie and uh, split between Erie and Lorraine County. And I always tell people I grew up in a small town. It's, you know, 10, 11,000 people. Monroe County is one of the largest geographic uh, land area counties in the state, but only has a total county population of 14,000. Um, so it's, it's small and it's rural, and the, the topography uh, presents some challenges to development as well. Flat land is very scarce. But again, Monroe County, you know, you've all probably seen this map or similar ones. Monroe County is one of those uh, places where both the Utica and Marcellus Shale uh, uh, plays are being accessed. And again, it's become a sweet spot for drilling. You know, it's hard to keep track of all the latest uh, 
uh, production results, but you know, typically Monroe County has you know, several of the top 10 producing gas wells uh, in the state at any one given time. Um, so it definitely has become a sweet spot for drilling. Uh, year, to, year to date, or I should say cumulative, uh, 248 wells now in the county in various stages of development. Uh, a lot of the big players are active, uh, especially Intero, um, Gulfport, Stat Oil, and Triad Hunter, which is part of the Magnum Hunter Group. Um, and you can see the, the, the border along the right-hand side of the screen, that's, the, uh, that's the, the Ohio River. So just across there is, is West Virginia. But you can see a lot of the activity right along the uh, 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 river line, the pocket down here in the southwest part of the county. And then up there in Seneca Township, that's near Noble County. The uh, Mark West uh, facility is, uh, is nearby. So that you know, provides a little bit of background as to why that's such a hot spot. So one of the things that always frustrates me about economic developers, because again, I sit on both sides of the fence. You know, when I'm working with corporate clients and interfacing with economic developers on their behalf, uh, and then also advising economic developers on how to become more competitive in their job. Um, but one of the things I've always frustrated with is, you know, it's, you know, operators are standing by. So often economic development is a react, reactionary profession rather than being a proactive and aggressive approach. I think it was actually earlier in uh, 2013 when the Appalachian Resins Project was originally announced for Marshall County, West, West Virginia which is just across the river from Monroe County uh, on the other side. Um, and one of the articles talked about uh, Jim Cutler, the, the CEO of Appalachian Resins, talked about how this project was different. You know, he, he spent a, a great deal of time uh, going through the methodology of why a smaller regional sized cracker project makes economic sense. And, it, you know, he would argue that it makes sense for other reasons as well. But one of those articles said that you know, this regional uh, sized plant, you know, he could envision you know, multiple plants being constructed, perhaps multiple plants even in, within the Appalachian Basin. So through a series of uh, you know, efforts and attempts, I you know, made some efforts to contact Mr. Cutler and said, hey, we're really glad to have you building this plant across the river from us. If the opportunity ever presents itself, we'd love for you to consider Monroe County for future investments. Surprisingly, one day he responded to my message. Apparently they had been having some difficulty closing the real estate transaction with their uh, potential site in West Virginia. And he said, yeah, you know, I hadn't heard of Monroe County before, um, but I see on the map you're right across the river from us. Um, if you have a site that meets A, B, and C, let's talk. And I had one in my back pocket. Um, now, at the time, I didn't know that it wasn't for sale. Um, it was one of those sites that, and I call it the Bigfoot of sites. It was rumored to exist, but I never really knew exactly where it was. Um, but the site that you see on the map here actually used to be home to a plant in, uh, that actually went out of business in the early 80s and was completely demolished in 1984, a company called Ohio Ferro Alloys. But this property has actually been owned uh, privately for you know, 50, 60 years by the same owner. Um, so after Mr. Cutler said, yeah, find me a site and I'll take a look, um, I made uh, you know, initial contact with the owner of the proposed site and they said, yeah, you know, this is something we don't typically develop real estate. We own lots of property all over the place. We'd, we're just comfortable letting it sit here. So well, you know, as, with my economic development hat on, I'm thinking, flat land on the river near Clarington, which you know, now is an internationally known hub for natural gas, um, and also rail access. I'm thinking, wow, I got to get this site on the market because we don't have a lot of industrial development sites like this. So I convinced them to at least let me sort of trespass on the site. They said, well, just don't tell the right, you know, just don't tell certain people, but kind of go on the site and take the take the company there and, and look around. So I was able to arrange a site visit with uh, an Appalachian Resins representative uh, back two years ago now already. It's hard to believe. Um, 
he had, this guy was actually from the area, so he was familiar with the Monroe County. He grew up on the West Virginia side, um, so that was that was beneficial to our cause. Um, he thought the site could work, so he said, he gave me a, a you know a request for information. He said, come back to us, gather the site information, and we'll start to do some due diligence. So we did that. Meanwhile, you know Monroe County again. It's changed somewhat since 2013. You know, sales tax revenues have actually, you know, gone up quite a bit because of the uh, shale gas development activity. But again, it's a small rural, typically one of the, you know, least prosperous uh, counties in Ohio. So you know, we're not the commissioners aren't flush with cash. You know, there's not a big slush fund for economic development. But I was able to convince the commissioners of the need. Uh, and reasons why we need to establish a county port authority. And in December of uh, 2013, we did that. And for those of you that don't know, port authorities in Ohio, uh, it's under Ohio Revised Code Section 4582, they have a lot of uh, unique powers. And, and Ohio's port authority statute is really sort of a national model. Um, there's a lot of flexibility uh, and powers that are granted, especially for real estate development and finance. So flipping over calendar year to 2014, um, after we uh, developed you know, a, a package of information for Appalachian residents to take a look at, I was able to secure a meeting with some of their representatives and the county commissioners. Um, everybody liked what you know, the others were saying. First, first and second quarter of 2014 was sort of that period where we were engaging stakeholders, you know, having sort of high level discussions with um, utility folks, um, rail operators, um, EPA, et cetera, trying to get everything in place. Now, I mentioned the, the owner of this site, um, they were reluctant to even consider selling it. It took them from October um, to June just sort of work through their corporate hierarchy, um, but thankfully uh, they agreed to, uh, to sell the Monroe County Port Authority this piece of property. Shortly thereafter, uh, in, it was actually in August, um, it was actually Labor Day weekend, I'll never forget, when this uh, press release came out here, um, our Port Authority had uh, signed a letter of intent with Appalachian residents to lease this property that we were in process of acquiring. And that sent forth a chain of events. Uh, we began a phase one environmental assessment that we got um, uh, funding from the commissioners. We received a grant from American Electric Power to work on preliminary engineering uh, for the sewer extension that we needed to, to access this site and started to negotiate those prop, uh, purchase agreement terms as well. Um, so it was, it was quite, a, quite an exciting day for Monroe County when you know, they made the, the top fold of the uh, Columbus Dispatch uh, Labor Day weekend. But as you know, you know, things in the industry changed a little bit. Um, commodity prices began to go down. The industry started to slow down a little bit. And most importantly for Appalachian residents, or I shouldn't say most importantly, but one of the important factors that happened um, was the announcement of the PTT Global Project just up the river in Belmont County. Um, my personal opinion is I, I, hope, I hope it happens more than anything because it's, such, it's of such a large scale that its impact on the region is going to be so great, and it's going to position Monroe County and all the other counties uh, to benefit from some of the spinoff opportunities. Initially, Appalachian residents had, uh, had come out publicly shortly after that announcement and said, we're still going to give this a go. But you, you, know, you have to contrast the two, the, two, uh, the two companies and the other companies that are in the ethane cracker business. What's really unique about Appalachian Resins is it's a startup. That's a great thing. You know, entrepreneurialism in this country is, is part of the reasons why it's a great place to be. Um, that being said, you know, last time I looked, I think it was PTT was number 84 on the Fortune Global 100 list. So they, they have, their pockets are a bit deeper than a, a startup from Houston. Um, and then, of course, just recently, uh, Appalachian Resins announced that they're putting their project on hold um, for, for a variety of reasons, one of which is that, you know, given their position relative to some of the other projects, 
they felt that they're at a competitive disadvantage in terms of labor market and construction timeline. Uh, PTT, you know, as I'm sure most of you know, uh, recently announced that they're moving forward with $100 million towards the feed study or front end engineering and design work. And, you know, the construction labor and, and trades, uh, you know, labor markets have been tight anyways. Um, bring in, you know, a few thousand workers at least to build one plant and then try to do the same with another plant just, you know, 10 miles down the road. They thought that could be problematic. You know, PTT is of a size where they could simply outbid a smaller company for uh, the scarce labor and the skilled trades that are needed. Um, so, you know, th this whole this whole uh, project opportunity has been really a blessing for Monroe County, regardless of whether it moves forward or not, um, because we are moving forward. Our property acquisition uh, will be completed this quarter. Um, we're in the process of establishing a tax increment financing district uh, for this entire stretch of riverfront. Um, this is just, the bottom corner here is just at the Clarington municipal border. So again, Clarington is this you know, national hub of natural gas pipelines. So this is a very attractive place to be. Um, the property that our Port Authority is acquiring is uh, just a little bit under 50 acres. It's in the top upper right-hand corner. All of this other acreage is also available and on the market for sale. Um, so we have probably about 200 acres of flat riverfront rail-served industrial land that's going to be on the market uh, right now. Um, in the Appalachian Residence Projects, you know, win, lose, or draw, was really sort of the impetus to help get these things in motion. Um, so it's been, it's certainly been a blessing in that regard. Um, our phase two environmental site assessment will be completed in the first quarter of uh, 2016. Um, thanks in large part to Jobs Ohio providing us a revitalization grant to help fund that study. And then also through some other successful grant writing, we've obtained uh, funding now to complete detailed engineering on our water and sewer extension. That looks to be completed the first quarter of 2016 as well. So again, from the corporate location uh, decision process, um, having turnkey sites is, I, I can't emphasize how important that is. You know, corporate site selection is about risk mitigation. You know, if you can minimize the uncertainties, both from a time and cost standpoint, that positions your community or property uh, so much better relative to, to others. So now that we have these assets, who are our targets? You know, not surprisingly, the list on the left-hand side of the screen, you know, oil and gas, metals, chemicals, plastics. You know, we have multimodal transportation assets, both rail and river. It's amazing the abundance of utility capacity we have, certainly gas, so heavy gas users, heavy electric users. Um, being on the river, if somebody needs processed water, we have that. Um, so really up and down this, this oil and gas stream, um, we're very competitively positioned. And especially for the mid and downstream opportunities, you know, these are from an economic development standpoint, these tend to be the more labor intensive and job intensive uh, projects. Uh, so again, you know, going down that checklist of, of transportation assets, um, where we're located, um, you know, our proximity to other midstream processing facilities is certainly key. It was key to both PTT and Appalachian Resins, you know, with the, the fractionator facilities on the West Virginia side of the river, uh, proximity to those uh, cuts down costs for their projects. Um, the picture in the bottom right-hand screen is the uh, Blue Racer processing facility in Bern, which is in the northwestern part of Monroe County, um, right in this area. So Blue Racer is one of those great companies that, in, that has invested in Monroe County. Uh, I think all in, you know, that'll probably be five or $600 million capital investment, about 40 full-time, very good paying jobs. Not every company is looking for, you know, a, a ground up uh, kind of development opportunity. The other thing that's really nice is that we have some industrial buildings that are ready for uh, tenants. The Hannibal Industrial Park uh, is really a, a success story. 
And sometimes it takes just the vision and, and people taking a risk uh, to make good things happen. Um, this was the, the former, this facility was the former Ormet Aluminum Rolling Mill. Um, Ormet Aluminum has had a history that's been uh, spotted with bankruptcies. Um, in their 2006 bankruptcy, they decided to get out of the aluminum finishing business and they decided to sell their rolling mill. So a company called Artco Group International, or AGI, based out of White Plains, New York, uh, bought this for their steel slab business um, in, in July of 2007. And my initial introduction to Monroe County was on a corporate site selection project. And I remember being here with a client when this building only had one tenant in it. Um, and they were occupying maybe 100,000 square feet of space at the time. There's 1.25 million square feet of space under roof. So you can imagine sort of the eeriness and just, you know, when Ormet disposed of this in their bankruptcy, they just literally picked up and left. Uh, so it just had a very, you know, eerie, uh, you know, vacant kind of feel. But, you know, through a lot of hard work and vision, you know, this, this facility is now what, you know, they dub it as the energy campus. You know, the 20 different uh, companies now call it home, employing approximately 300 people. A lot of these are oil and gas related. Most of them are. Um, but the one key thing that really helped spur this is just sort of that perfect storm of, of events. You know, the development of shale, the efforts to reactivate the rail line sort of converged at the same time. And in 2012, rail traffic began to flow and service this building. So now there are, you know, three different uh, frac sand companies. Um, so within the span of a couple of years, it went from zero rail cars to now probably they'll do about 3,000 rail cars this year. Um, so that's been a big asset to attract new business to this site. And there is some space available for lease too. So directly adjacent, as I mentioned, this used to be the Ormet rolling mill. So right here, this is the Hannibal Industrial Park, this lower facility. Directly above that is the Ormet aluminum smelter facility. So in Ormet's most recent bankruptcy in the fall of 2013, um, they sold this uh, property at bankruptcy auction. A company at, called Niagara Worldwide that's based in St. Louis uh, bought the site for $25 million. In total, it has 1,700 acres. Much of that is hillside. But the, the property that you see on the screen is, again, 300 give or take acres of flat, developable land with all the utilities in place, river and rail, and the phone is ringing <laughs> almost literally off the hook. There are several large scale companies that are looking at this site. Um, most of the structures you see there are in the process of being demolitioned or demolished uh, to allow for new development, but there are some existing spaces that are turnkey and, and ready to go. To give an idea of the utility capacity that this site has, you know, a lot of the, the companies in the oil and gas market, you know, plastics, chemicals, tends to be, they tend to be high users of utilities, especially electricity. You know, I've learned a little bit about the process of making aluminum and how energy intensive it is. This site uh, was served by American Electric Power, and AEP you know, serves, you know, properties in, I don't know, 10, 15 states around the U.S. This was their single largest customer. And the, the analogy that they always used was that the Ormet plant used as much electricity as the entire city, city of Pittsburgh. So it has approximately 550 megawatts of power coming into it. It had its own power station just dedicated just for that site. Um, so again, it's these unique assets that now match up to the industry opportunities presented by oil and gas that I think are gonna propel Monroe County forward. Here's some of that uh, other acreage that I had mentioned before. It's on the market with uh, Colliers out of Pittsburgh, a uh, 200 acre development site just north of Clarington. Um, so again, opportunities abound. One of the other key things we have to offer as well uh, we have a local skilled workforce. So when, when Ormet Aluminum shut its doors, you know, that left a, a, a workforce in place that has the skills needed for the oil and gas and the chemical industry. This was a map that I put together for a prospect that was just looking at the former Ormet site, just showing where the labor comes from and, and you know, 
most people don't think of this as, a, as a, a, an area that has great highway access, but as the map shows, people drive uh, distances to get here for work. So there's a, there's a labor force available. So why Monroe County? Um, we have the critical site selection factors needed for the large scale opportunities that are at hand, um, including industrial sites and buildings that are available. We have the multimodal transportation assets, and we have the utility capacity as well. And one of the things we've really focused on is providing strong economic development support at, at the local level. And again, using that consulting approach to provide sort of a client focused project management to work with these companies. Um, and then bringing together the right, getting the right players on the team. You know, so strategic partners and industry contacts, other specialty service providers. And again, companies always like to save money and we have some good opportunities for both sales and real property tax uh, exemptions. So with that, I'd like to say thank you very much for your attention this morning and please feel free to ask any questions if you'd like. Thank you. Yes, sir. I have a question. You, um, you describe Monroe County as the Switzerland of Ohio, which uh, conjures up bucolic images of rolling farmlands and the rest of that. Has it been difficult for the people of Monroe County to adjust to, um, to uh, high capacity economic development from, from, a former, from a former lifestyle? You know, I, I think somewhat, um, but I, I think the transition has been very smooth actually, um, especially from the local political level. You know, I wish every client was as good as the Monroe County commissioners. Um, they've been 100% supportive um, we're doing things that have never been done in Monroe County before, um, you know, in terms of the Port Authority setting up a tax increment finance uh, area, uh, looking at speculative investments um, to get sites ready. Um, so, I mean, you know, there's always a little bit of the fear of the unknown, uh, but I think political support has been unwavering. Um, and even on the residential side, you know, there can be some, dis you know, shale can disrupt things locally. Um, you know, with traffic and, and other issues. Um, but I think, you know, the people that I've met, they're just good, hardworking people. You know, they want economic opportunities. And, uh, you know, this, the shale development has presented them with that. And I think they want to take advantage of it. Question out in the audience. And there still are beautiful rolling hills, by the way. <laughs> Raise your hand, please, if you have a question. Um, let me ask you, um, who are your competitor counties in Southeast Ohio uh, who are being as aggressive as, you, as Monroe County in uh, trying to take advantage of these opportunities? I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, I don't, I don't look at the neighboring county to, counties as necessarily being competitors to Monroe. You know, again, the, the opportunities that are, are evalu the, the companies that are evaluating this part of the state you know, they're typically looking at West Virginia as well. Many of them are looking at sites in Pennsylvania as well. Um, so you have to put your regional vision, you know, you have to look at things through a regional lens. Um, things that happen 10 miles up the road in Belmont County are going to have a, a very large impact on Monroe, on Noble, on Guernsey, on Harrison. Um, you know, PTT, you know, they're talking thousand workers, several thousand construction workers. Um, you know, there aren't that many people just in Belmont County. So they by default, their labor market uh, is going to be much broader than just their county. Uh, so, you know, we're all Buckeyes when it comes to that. Um, we have to, we have to demonstrate at a regional level that we can support projects of this size. Mm -hmm.